Well, we're back. Anywho, what I got is a little shot here of the uh, backboard, kind of the input board, it's sort of a preamp board. There's the audio section on it. Oh, that's a little better. I repaired those uh, connections. Uh, these over here, these big ones, are the grounds. And there's another one up there. Those were really tore. It's kind of it's like almost like the solder tore. So I touched those up. And just kind of did the best I could. Over here, these actually were well. I don't know. Use the word lifted. Use the word tore. You know, there's a couple different nomenclatures there. Uh, what I did there was. I made some little L-shaped pieces of solid wire, and on this one, this one, the 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 place where it was damaged was so close to that po that uh, component there. I just made a little L shape, goes to the from left, or excuse me, from right to left, and then down. And on this one, it goes from right to left, and then down. And on this one, there's a circuit trace there, and on this one, there's a circuit trace there, and they're too far away to really do. A stellar job. So what I did was I carefully took a, a modeler's knife or one of those exacto blades. What actually it isn't. It's a uh, it's a surgeon's scalpel. And used the number eleven blade and kind of carefully scratched a little place away just to clean that that green um, kind of covering off, and then tinned that and then laid that little piece of wire in there. And then after I did all that, I took a toothpick with some gel super glue and touched on the edges. Those traces were a little bit kind of lifted and a little concerned that they're going to wobble around. I was kind of looking in there to see what was going on. I did take this uh, circuit board loose on the back of there. There's like four little kind of like sheet metal wood screws. And I also took these two couplings loose and slid them back and then the board could kind of tilt at an angle. I was going to take these shafts out but it ended up being a bigger pain than I really bargained on it. It gave me enough room to tilt the thing and scooch it off to the side so I could work on it with the soldering iron. And it, came, it came out pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect but it's not any worse. After I soldered that, I cleaned that up a little bit with the uh, some alcohol to kind of knock the flux off there, even though it doesn't look like they did at the factory. It's a little, I don't know, it's... <sighs> Solder nowadays just isn't like it used to be years ago. And if I had been thinking, I'd have got, I've got some old solder that's kind of lead and tin and got a little bit of silver in it. It does a pretty good job, but I've been carefully hoarding it for some real special occasions and this isn't one of them. And then I just swung the board back down, screwed it back down, checked all this wire and make sure it didn't break anything. Put these back on, lined the knobs up. You can take these shafts out, but at this end there's a C-clip and it's pretty tiny. It's not a flat C clip either. It's more of like a C spring. It didn't look like any fun, and I really wasn't in the mood to lose any parts off of this. It looked pretty springy, so that was, I thought, a pretty decent repair. I talked to the owner, and he didn't want to, you know, I told him, I said, well, while I've got that board up doing that repair, do you want me to redo any of those caps? I said, no, just do the stuff you need to do to make it run. Don't do anything extra. Okie dokie, you're the boss. And I've been messing around in here. Let me scoot you over here a little bit. Uh, I did a little snooping around to discovered. Uh, once again, there we go. Mm, it's a little tough to see. Uh, there's nothing dangerous in here. I poke my hand in here. There are two pins there, and there's actually another set there, like this and like this. They uh, go across the one of the emitter resistors for the output transistor to monitor the current so you can set the bias. And then the bias is set 
over here. There's a couple pots. Nothing stellar. Um, earlier I talked about um, there's one of those pots, you know, right there. The other one, where's the other one? Right, uh, right there. I noticed a couple of these caps were different colors. These three, and I don't think it's anything. I don't think those have been replaced. I looked underneath at the circuit board underneath, and doesn't appear to be replaced. I kind of checked the fuse. One thing I did do. Um, and uh, I don't know. Shameless. I don't know. It's not a shameless plug. It's just a fact. I had a little trouble with um, this control. There's actually a, a switch, and it's real long. It's it's on a little rack and pinion, and it's kind of it's it's actually a lot like the front end of a rack and pinion steering, and it rattles back and forth. And there's another one. There's one that goes this way, one that goes down. And uh, the the contacts kind of kept coming and going a little bit. And that was before I worked on this. And what I did was I went and I uh, used up my ancient can. I'm not a big believer in things in spray cans. To me, they, they're kind of like, they might as well just say, you know, patented snake oil. And I'm also not a big believer in things in bottles you pour in car tanks or in your transmission. That stuff just seems like maybe a stopgap measure. Anyway, one of the things I do actually believe in is this stuff. This is a Deox. It's the D5. You can get this, uh, amazingly enough, Radio Shack carries this, although you better bring your wallet. I think I paid, I want to say about $18 for that little bottle, that little jar of that. And uh, it's kind of funny. They've. Uh, this is an old, I think there's like maybe one spray of that left in here. I, what I'm going to do is. Yeah, there's a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully puncture this can and uh, drain out the deox that's left in that old can into this little bottle. And I'll use a toothpick to dispense that stuff. It's kind of like passing out gold. And I think the I think the aerosol has run out of there, which is really not bad. There's nothing much. Anyway, you can see that these the the branding has changed. I mean, this is actually printed on the steel. This is this is paper labeling. One thing I do like about these is they give you a nozzle that you can adjust. You turn it. This is low, medium, and high. Um, and they give you a little spout. This is made by, I think it's Craig. It's Craig or Craig or whatever, however you pronounce it. There are places, other places that sell like guitar shop. There's some other places. A really good hardware store might have that. If you got a good electronics place, they might have that. What I thought was funny about this, um, the the D5 is kind of the general purpose. There's a gold version. There's a bunch of different versions. You can buy this in a in a liquid form, like a fingernail polish bottle. It's not cheap. But what caught my eye, and I've had this thing, I, I don't know how long I've had this. I bet I've had this 10 years and slowly been spraying it out. That's not oh, don't get to spraying it around too much, you know. One thing I thought was kind of fun. So is that part number still the same? Yep. The actual part number of this is D5S-6. Although I bet the formula for this may have changed a tiny bit. When I bought this, you could probably... Well, I'm just gonna make this up. Just teasing. You probably could have bought carbon tip when this when this came out when I got this can. Anyway, what I thought was interesting is originally it's 5.5 ounces. This is a six ounce container, and now it's five ounces even. So the prices went up, and then they're stinging on the damn containers. Uh, if you get that Radio Shack, be careful. They've got some other house brands of spray that I really don't think are worth a damn. They're like nine dollars, and you might be tempted to buy those. Just this spray is kind of for cleaning up crackly contacts and crackly um, volume controls and stuff. It's not. A, it's not really a cleaner. 
it's a little hard to describe. So if you're cleaning something, you know, if you're just spraying around, removing grease or something like that, you go get a bottle of alcohol or something different. Don't be spraying that stuff. You might as well spray. You might as well have raw dollars shooting out of the nozzle. It's a little pricey. It does work though. And one of the things you got to be a little bit careful of is uh, it's kind of a little oily. And so any like switches that are phenolic, you might want to be a little careful. Don't let it soak in there. And read the directions. You know, they they kind of tell you to spray it and then let it dry and then spray it again and work the controls. Anyway, chase the uh, chase the uh, kind of intermittence away out of these controls, which I was pretty concerned about because these these things don't look like they're going to be any fun to replace. I don't think you can get a replacement for those. I'd have to take them apart and maybe attempt to soak them or something. It would have been a big pain in the butt. And I also, <coughs> pardon me, uh, I sprayed the balance control with just a you know literally a, t a shot about that much and the. Uh, the volume control had a little place in it I chased away, so that stuff does work. Well, what else do we need to do here? We didn't. I checked the bias or the idle current on this. Um, just with that, it's pretty easy to do. It's nothing, nothing super fan fantastic. Scooch you around a little bit here. Yeah, how am I gonna do this? Not easily. Actually, I checked this on the millivolt scale. That might work. And normally, well, at least on this this type of thing, is probably about. 20 milliamps, 20 some milliamps, it's like 27 milliamps, it's warming up, it's been warming up, so there'll be a little bit of drifting, anyway, make both channels the same, I don't know if you can, there we go, right, those two and those two, one of the other things I did do that I thought was kind of interesting, all these all these uh, RCA jacks, the tops of them are just a cr kind of a cruddy mess. And I think that's just dirt. And if you can kind of see that one there, see how it's kind of shiny here and gunky there. Or just That one's a good example. I've been kind of cleaning them. Uh, I think what that is is dust has settled on that thing and then dust kind of attracts moisture and then that, that's corroded those a little bit. So I got that mess cleaned up and we're gonna back up. There's there's those screws. This was kind of interesting to me. This is annoying. This is uh, isn't a screw. It's just what well, it's a screw but it's not into that circuit board. It just pokes straight through and the other side there's some wire wrapped around there for some. It's a dumb ground is what it is. It grounds that little that little input board for the probably for the audio preamp. That audio preamp on this thing I think is kind of I don't know. It's not a great one. It's got a FET, a couple transistors. It's kind of noisy. I don't know. To, with today's transistor technology, if you're really worried about it, you might buy an offboard amp. They make little uh, turntable preamps that convert. You know, the turntable pickup. To line level, it might be quieter if you're really worried about it. And some of them aren't terribly expensive. The cases and stuff are a little hazy. They look like a tuna fish can, but they work. Or you could build one your own. They're not terribly complicated. Most of them are just little op amps with power supplies. It's about all there is to it. If you even have a turntable. Oh, I've checked a couple other things. I checked the switching here and. I really need to get some real speakers and hook up. Like I said, I don't listen to stereo much anymore. So I think we're ready to kind of button this up. I've been, uh, I went through and checked all these jacks, made sure they all work. You know, it appears to be running fine. Excuse me. 
trying to get by and the camera always gets in the way and then I bump it and then I get grumpy. Uh, other than that, not a lot to talk about. Yeah, you know that's something I probably really ought to check. Never noticed that till now. Yeah, I'll do that when I hook some speakers up. The uh, speaker selector, it's kind of got an off speaker set A, speaker set B, and then speakers A and B. It's kind of got this sort of a gear drive rigmarole on it. It might be a little cr crackly too. I might have to spray that. You know, I better do that. I'll be shut you off here. Okay. I, just went and I used to have a, st a little jig to hook up stereo stuff and work on it, and I haven't, uh, I haven't used it so long. I got tired of it hogging up a bunch of room in my bench. So I took it apart, put it away. Let's see. to scamper it away. Where the heck did that go? <laughs> oh, there it is. I get for putting stuff away. I was just going to kludge that in, but I might as well just beat the rush. I also put away a lot of my... I put most of my stereo stuff away. It's Like I said, there's just not a lot You don't use something, you put it away. That's all there is to it. Yeah, well, this obvious got some leads here for the speaker. It's a little advent speaker. down we're on speaker set A let's see here that's the left um, these older stereos are, are kind of single-ended they're not they're not uh, floating amplifiers so they can be referenced to ground oh you gotta check it make sure a lot of newer Especially car stereos, the only way they get any power out of those pieces of junk is to make uh, bridging amps, floating amps, call them what you want. That is a really kind of, that is a very good system. I don't care for that jack or that jack field that's just there. Okay. Let's see if we get in trouble with YouTube today. Yeah, that one works. So, what was that? You name that tune, and it does that easy one. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we could. Maybe we can find some. This deal where you. Can't do anything on YouTube with any noises. It's kind of but there are other viewers. Okay, my is and he's eleven years old. Some talk show. Okay, well that appears to work. 
Mm, so we could hook up the other side. Let me scoot you over here. Nothing major. Volume's down. I used to have a little kind of a, I don't know, patch bay or punch board on a little sloping chassis, and then you use the appropriate leads and it hooked up all you know hooked up all the stuff you're gonna need which is your audio generator and the oscilloscope and external noise you know, FM radio hmm. I'm Sam Rubin and let lemons make lemonade here. Why lemon? The show the kids like best. It's the rocket fan. The fictionalized adventures of a real family led by their 19 year old autistic son. Okay. Well, one thing I could do is I could uh, I could run this into a dummy load and check the power. I really don't think this thing's going to have any problems, though. I don't see any problems, per se. Asperger's on TV. It's just pretty amazing. I've never thought that people... Would you want to be on television? Yeah, I don't think my audio source can... Oh, I can check it. I don't think I can drive this hard enough to get any real power out of it. Yeah, I could drive a little harder. Thought you're never going to make it out of bed in the morning. 20 years ago, Daniel Heinlein watched Dick Clark posting the 25,000. Maybe it's got a little bark to it. Today, Brody Kaufman. Yep. Okay. It can drive it. You just need to turn it up a little bit. So I need to test that, I guess. I don't know. I'm pretty much ready to put the lid back on this thing. So there you go. There's the little Kenwood uh, KA6100. Kind of back in the pink of things again. I think he just wants this just to play with, you know. I don't think he has any delusions about it being a real super audio piece, but that's okay. It's a, it's a nice little unit, I think. Well, I think we're going to call this baby done. There's nothing else to really tinker with or fix. Take her easy. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them. Talk to you later. Take it easy.